started, and I, uh, John and I uh, talked about this. We were going to start with the uh, with the cases where we have inspection reports because those tend to uh, go more quickly. And then those of you who are here for inspection reports get to go home. <laughs> so starting out with uh, uh, oh, Steve Mundy Dale. Do we have a member of the committee here? No, we don't. Let's, let's skip over you for the moment. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sharon and Joseph Blatchford. Yes. All right, why don't you step on up? And someone from the committee want to tell us what the report is? Either um, uh, you, you yeah, yourself? Yeah, it looks like I didn't copy all the pages. So hopefully someone from the committee. Yeah, OK. And you, and you sent these to oh, But I sent them all. Yeah. OK. So who's, do we have copies of the report here? Uh, this is for, it looks like I didn't print the second page, so you may have to bring it up on your computer. What's this? These are copies of the inspection reports that I mailed out. Mailed out. This would be this one. And I don't have it. Here we go. I, I have it. Yeah. Hey, Sal. Yeah, no, it's okay. I've got it, I've got it right here, too. I think I have it in an email. Okay. Okay, so the, the first one is Sharon and Joseph Blatchford, and, and the procedure is we'll have a brief uh, report from the, uh, from the committee, which doesn't mean reading the whole report, just giving us... Uh, an overview or a summary of what's in the report. And then if the uh, taxpayer has any uh, comments to make, we'll take uh, limited comments and then we'll, uh, we'll debate and, uh, and vote. So are you up, Sal? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll manage. I had one with me. I just didn't open it up. I didn't know what you're doing. Um, so the, uh, the the main argument in this case was not essentially with the um, condition of the building or that sort of thing. Uh, and in our inspection, um, it, it was it was mainly with the comparison to the to values on nearby um, nearby side streets. Um, the, the, the property compares favorably with uh, very similar ranch-style houses along Terrace Street. It has uh, one more bedroom and uh, I believe one more bathroom than, than the others. Um, some of the evidence presented by the um, appellant, well, there was a, a couple of statements made about traffic noise, but it was, it was all really subjective. There's no way to evaluate it, and so we weren't really able to take that into consideration. And the, the side streets are only 50, 70 yards away. I mean, I imagine the noise level is similar, but again, it's, it's all subjective. Uh, comparing it to um, similar properties in the area, it, it was actually at the uh, lower end of the uh, Square foot pricing, and we felt that it was uh, it was fairly assessed. Okay, thanks, Mr. Blatchford. Do you have any comments? I do. Uh, I think that the process is very flawed. Uh, I don't consider any of those houses that were cherry picked to be really that close to what my house is. And with me uh, just going through the list, I looked at properties that were assessed roughly the same amount, the same dollar amount. And others were in more favorable neighborhoods as far as I'm concerned. They were in quieter neighborhoods or whatever, but I just looked at certain places that were roughly the same assessment and 
to me, a bunch of them, I would have, I'd trade with them in a heartbeat. Okay. You know, for an example, um, I just wrote down a few. I could have done, I could have done dozens of them. Um, 21 Terra Street, 455,000. And it was only up from 328, so the percentage was much less. Larger lot, a couple hundred yards down the road, a uh, much bigger house. I have no idea about the condition, but it's a much bigger house than mine. Uh, nine Dunpatrick Circle, it's 532. It's more than mine, but it's a dead end cul de sac, 6.3 acres. Beautiful house, beautiful lot. And it's not that much more than mine. And supposedly my little 0.28 acre lot is worth 96,000. Well, how much is 6.3 acres a one minute drive up the road on a dead end cul de sac worth? And the house is very nice. And I'd say, you know, fairly similar in size. Uh, 14 Pearl Street, 413,000, up from 253. Right in the meadow, speed bumps, very accessible. I've been in the house, very nice house. Uh, very accessible to Hubbard Park, very accessible to the rec field, very accessible to downtown, flat neighborhood, speed bumps on the road. Uh, another one there. Uh, nine Pinewood, very nice house, bigger lot than mine. Uh, seems much newer, much nicer house, 410,000. 27 Deerfield, bigger lot, very nice house, 426,000. All these houses, they're not all ranch style houses, but they're houses that were assessed about the same, and the percentage that their assessments went up were much less than mine. Now, I wasn't happy with my last assessment. I mean, I understood, though, because I did way more work. And for me, I just don't understand why mine went up 93.7%. I have not said anything along that I couldn't get that much because I houses in this, in this town sell for crazy prices. Tim could tell you all about that. He knows all about that. To me, that just means that maybe a bunch of my neighbors were underassessed. That there should have been, that the percentages should have been closer. But but for me to go up twenty five hundred dollars in my taxes, where other people didn't, when I did way more work between two thousand and two thousand ten, to me it's, it's just crazy. It just shows me that the process is flawed. Okay, thank you. And committee members of the board, any any discussion before we vote on the uh, report? Kim. I would just add that our inspection, we couldn't go to all the places that you mentioned, but we did look at them. I mean, right. And, and I'm not saying I know the house is on the Mr. inside. Blasher, Mr. Blasher? Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's let him talk. I think we were impressed with the quality of your house, and I personally was concerned about noise because I think that's. I mean, I appreciate that. That's an interesting factor, and I think maybe Marty can explain what I didn't know it at the time, but there are different categories of noise. Uh, we have the we have the neighborhoods broken down, and I if I. Believe, I believe that neighborhood is called a um, traffic good. Yes. Um, so traffic is factored into the cost of the land. So traffic good means it's a good neighborhood, but traffic affects the value. Correct. Yeah. So that was taken into account. Yes. Right. But the report said that <clears throat> our Mr. house Blaster. was average. Mr. The quality of the house is average. Sir. I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're done taking argument. Oh. Thank you. I, I thought he was looking for some input. Any discussion among the board? The chair would entertain a motion. Motion to accept the uh, report with the assessment remaining at 
for 46800. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. All right, Ginny Carpenter. I'll just be handing them up to you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I know you called me and you were waiting for somebody to show up. They haven't shown up haven't yet. Haven't shown up yet. I have a commitment at 7, so I'd, I'd like to, I'm, I'm happy to talk even if they're not here. Okay, and, and maybe what we'll do, you know, we'll, we'll get, we will definitely get you out of here. Um, if, if we don't have a member of the committee, uh, one of the other of us will summarize the report and- Actually, I read the yeah. Okay, Mary, Bob, and Rosie. Who wants to tell us the story? <laughs> you didn't give us a chance to caucus before. <laughs> Are you comfortable? Um, yeah, but if I can look at your report over your shoulder, that would be great. Um, so um, we did an inspection of the property. Um, the appellant made a couple of different arguments. Um, and so one was about the property itself. Um, she mentioned that the property was um, swampy and um, kind of wasn't sure about its value there. Um, we did find that um, it was a level lot in front um, and that um, while there was a stream in the back, um, that that provided some privacy from the other lots. We didn't um, see a lot of rationale for reducing the value of the lot. Um, however, when it came to the house itself, um, we did find uh, that the condition uh, was accurate and the size was accurate. Um, but we did look at the comparables that the appellant presented, um, and we felt that they were um, very compelling and more compelling than the comparables that the assessor had presented, um, particularly 25 Hubbard Park Drive, which was a neighboring property, um, larger, um, and had 1.5 bathrooms instead of three quarters of a bathroom. Um, and if you just look at the building value, because the appellant's lot is quite large, but if you just looked at the building value, um, they were the same condition. Um, that property uh, was assessed um, uh, $9,100 more um, than 25 Hover Park Drive. And so, no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That, was, that property was assessed $10,900. More than than uh, 25 Harbor Park Drive, and so um, and then in addition, the um, some of the properties that the assessor had presented as equity comps, uh, the per square footed value um, for this property was uh, higher than the equity comps that the assessor presented. The appellant didn't present a new value that she felt it should be assessed at, um, so we were left to kind of determine that for ourselves. Um, and so we suggest uh, reducing the um, overall valuation by $20,000, focusing just on the value of the home itself, um, which would bring it slightly under 25 Hubbard Park Drive um, and would bring it per square footage uh, in alignment with the um, uh, properties assessed, uh, presented by the assessor for equity comps. Thanks. Ms. Carson, do you have any comment on that? Thank you. I'm for so someone... keeping it to a couple of minutes. But... Oh, I, I won't go long. Okay. I want to thank everyone for being here when I came two months, I guess two months ago. And thank you to Rosie and Mary and um, Bob for coming up to the house. I did not know I was supposed to say what I thought if what it, what it should be. I didn't think that was part of it. But if I had, I would have said something. So um, uh, I, I do want to say, Marty, I found you very difficult to work with because I said a couple different times that I'm, hap I'm available to come down. And I want you to show me these things, but you never did. I presented them all to you online. I know. Online that everybody has. I, but I want and you were in my office twice. Yeah, I was. So what we're what it would, it would be helpful for the board tonight is 
whether you have any comments about whether your, your agreement or disagreement with the report that we just heard. No. So you think this $20,000 reduction is a reasonable assessment? I wish I had said something sooner or said what I, I really thought 320000 would be a good one, but um, you know, I'm happy to get a reduction. Yeah, and to be honest, some people say a figure they think it should be, most people don't. So it's, it's certainly not a requirement. Thanks. Okay, the chair would entertain a motion. Motion to accept the uh, committee report. And is there a second? I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, everybody. All right, Steve, as promised. Um, and I will, I've, I've read this, and I can give a very brief uh, summary. The, um, the main points that the, uh, the committee hit are that uh, the taxpayer has uh, agreed that the market value of the property is probably what the assessor says it is. And uh, in inspecting the subject property and the comparables, they uh, find the property, the, you know, the cost per square foot and other measures to be of this subject property to be right around the middle of uh, of the subject properties. And so the proposal is to uh, sustain the assessor's uh, judgment. And, and that's all I've got. You've all received the uh, report, too. And so, Steve, again, if you have any comments, you're welcome to make them. Thank you. Um, so uh, the summary that, that you just gave us um, is accurate in terms of the basis for our appeal, um, that the assessment is at a higher percentage of fair market value than comparable properties. Um, so the really <clears throat> the dilemma with this report and with this um, with the process is that our, our case is that there are many properties in our neighborhood um, where, with similarly designed houses um, and um, the um, our, our appraised value is substantially higher. Um, the neighborhood of seventy thousand dollars more um, on average with all those um, properties in the area, <clears throat> and the process is set up so that the committee comes and looks at your house, and you're welcome to come, and they were welcome to come. And they verified that, in fact, um, we have a certain amount of space and uh, it's in a certain kind of condition, which is all fine. But our case is not anything about our house. The case is the comparables. And um, your, the process does not apparently allow for um, site inspection of any comparables. So um, I'm left with the knowledge that um, there are a number of properties in our neighborhood um, that are appraised substantially lower um, that have um, a similar or um, a similar configuration or a similar amount of finished space. Um, and I, I believe there's air, if, if, if it's based solely on a square footage uh, estimate, then, uh, then there's some errors there. But you were in no position to sort of judge them. So I'm not sure what more can be said. Um, the fact is, uh, the folks came. They were delightful. They did, <laughs> they did their job. Um, but I, I continue to be uh, substantially dissatisfied with the fact that um, this criterion is not met. Um, our assessment is at a higher percentage of fair market value than comparable properties. Okay. Thanks. Any, uh, would entertain a motion? I'll move to accept the committee's inspection report and recommendation. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. 
adopted the, the assessment of the committee's report. Thanks Thank for you. coming. I don't and envy you your task. Here we go. <laughs> you'll, you'll make your next meeting on time. All right, that is it for reports. Now on to the uh, uh, to the appeals. Um, okay, we'll start, Miss Grieca. <laughs> um, first property discussed tonight is Ten Hebert Road. Everybody has that in front of them. I hope. <clears throat> Uh, reappraisal company set a, um, an assessed value of $276,700. The property owner did, in, did attend the informal and formal grievances. No, no changes were made. Uh, home is a one-story ranch built in 1982, rated in good condition. Home is one full bathroom, two bedrooms. Basement is unfinished. Um, they're given the home a C or average quality for construction. Three comparable sales are of similar exterior obsolescence. Um, the main concern with the, with the homeowner at 10 Heber is, is the neighboring property. Um, these three comparable sales all uh, fall with similar issues. Uh, Sherwood Drive is a cut through down onto, um, uh, down onto route, route two. Uh, 302, uh, 220 and 250 Berlin Street are also high traffic areas. Um, they are selling between $204 a square foot and $434. Um, the subject assessment is $274 per square foot. Um, the assessed value of $276,700 is falling under the sale price of all three of those sales. Um, as you'll see on the second page there, um, I do mention that the three sales are, are used because of the uh, negative influences with the high traffic areas. <clears throat> Equity comparables, um, 8 and 12 Hebert Road are, na are um, direct neighbors to, uh, to the subject property. Um, they both have similar views of a uh, downstreet housing project, uh, which is the um, the uh, chief complaint of the homeowner. Their assessments, as you can see, are 297 and 293. Uh, the condition of the first home is a little better. Um, number 12, Hebert has a finished basement, so that's gonna, um, that changes the, the um, per square foot value on that. Uh, and another one, 14 Hebert, that one's at 286 per square foot. Um, so the subject property is under the, the neighbor at 8 and 12 Hebert. Um, so it, it appears as though the subject property is fairly assessed at 276700 taking into account the um, uh, housing complex across the street. The record card attached will give you a breakdown of the land, the building, um, condition, um, and this property was inspected in late 22 by the reappraisal contractor. Um, so we believe all the physical information to be correct. Um, and that's all I have for any questions on that. Any questions for the uh, assessor? Aaron. Um, I'm trying to think about how to evaluate the not the particulars of the appellant's discussion about the neighborhood issues, mm -hmm. but just to understand how from an assessment process, we'll, we'll hear testimony, I'm assuming, about that, but from an assessment process, how do you take that into effect as you do traffic or help me think the, understand that by using sales um, like those those three sales that I have if I was to if I were to do this for a bank I would use comparable sales that are have similar external obsolescence whether it's um, a dump across the street or an actual dump or you know a uh, um, high traffic area I would use comparables that are in similar neighborhoods um, so these three sales all have an external obsolescence to them that would bring value up or down in this case, it would bring it down. So it's managed through the sales, not through 
some observation of what is in fact happening. So you're using the objective nature of the sales Correct. to assess that. Yeah. Thank you. Because that's the definition of market value, what's somebody willing to sell, what's somebody willing to buy in a certain situation. Any other questions for the assessor before we go to the taxpayer? I just want to clarify what you're yes. just saying. You're not comparing this situation to there being done across the street. You're no, no. saying yes. that yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean that. Yeah, so I tried to touch myself. If there was an actual no, I mean, I, that's garbage a dump. situation because yeah. I think we're going to hear some yes. pretty concerning well, we'll yeah. Wait for the other yeah. One. So, right. So these three, these three sales, all they all have, you know, similar external um, influences, and the equity comps are, are direct neighbors. So the subject sits in the middle. The two on the left and right also look out the same view. Um, there is also, um, I didn't put this in, but 19 Hebert is also right behind the apartment complex, and that assessment is uh, 263. It's similar. It's pretty close to the subject. Uh, Mayor Terry. Um, can you tell us specifically what the, the uh, conditions, the similar conditions were on the comparable sales? Um, they're under the condition on the on the far right hand side. No, I mean I mean sorry, uh, not condition, but the you said that they had similar um, uh, oh, problems or neighborhoods. Okay, or so the these three sales are all in high traffic neighborhoods, high traffic areas. Like so Sherwood, lots of cars. Yeah, yeah. So that would influence the uh, the neighborhood uh, value. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Bob, you look like you're about to ask. Yeah. Me. So, so the comparable sales are on the same street, to the ones you showed us. No. Oh, those are the equity comparisons. Uh, the, okay. the first, the first three are the sell, the sales. Okay. But the equity comparisons are all on the same. Correct. And the first, so number eight and number twelve are direct neighbors to the subject property. So they have similar views. They have, they have similar views yeah. and similar location to. Yeah. Okay. That's. Okay, uh, would you raise your right hand? You solemnly affirm subject to the pains and penalties of perjury. Testimony about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Why don't you tell well, us? Where do I start? I don't, I guess, I start by saying I'm on a, a road that has no outlet at present. It's a dead end road. Uh, the comparisons to the other houses are somewhat skewed in that they're major roads. The major connector roads. So I, I, and I don't have two car garage. And all the houses that I saw on the latest info I got was like two car garages. I wouldn't even have a garage. There's mine, two of them. <laughs> you know? So anyway, pictures are worth a thousand words. And the apartments across the street, I am directly across from the apartments. This is out my living room window. I have a view of an overflowing dumpster every day. And that dumpster does not get emptied all the time. And if you really want excitement, you can watch the rats go in and out. And, you know, there, I have complained about the amount of cars going in and out of there. And this isn't on the road. This is in, in and out of the apartments. I counted one hour last year, sent it to uh, the police chief. There were over 30 cars in an hour, in an hour, going in and out of those apartments. And sometimes, why, well, there's even three or four of them trying to jockey to get out. And you know what? All those lights shine in my living room window. And I have to spend $600 on Venetian blinds to try to block it out. And they still come through the cracks. Well, see, here's another added bonus. Uh, it's my understanding they're building condos at the end of the street. Part of the deal is they're going to build a sidewalk to, on the whole street. That's my, out my front door, my front door, right there. The other houses they compared my house to already have sidewalks in front of them that are probably 50 feet away from the house. If they stick up sidewalk on my house, <laughs> I'm going to walk out my front. And people are going to, their dogs are going to be pooping on my lawn. People are going to be sitting on my front steps. People are going to be looking in my windows. So there are some issues there, too. And the other people that they're comparing me to on either side of me do not have this across the street from them. Yes, the police thing has gotten better. 
there were, you know, I have a police log here from 2000, you know, to 2022, shows there were 60 something police calls, you know, and it's like, okay, this is right out my living room window. This isn't to the left, this isn't to the right, this is right there. And, you know, if they take away my, my front yard, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that says it all, you know. I got nothing. I got nothing. You know, they take away the front yard and they want to raise my taxes for what supposedly is a community enhancement. Well, you tell me how somebody th giving directions to their house when they have to say, I live across from the overflowing dumpster. Tell me how that raises your property value. I don't know. I, I, I'll listen all day if you can tell me how that increases your property value. Uh, and, you know, the loose dogs, the pit bulls and all that, and, you know, all of the above. You know, this, I could go on and on because this has been ongoing for the last three years and it's wearing pretty thin. And, you know, I've asked for help with security cameras because I know there's some pretty shady characters there. One that I know is it has to be under house arrest because they only pop out every, to get air every so often. So it's a little unnerving for a woman my age to be living alone, wondering if I'm going to come home from vacation and find somebody living in my house. You know, I'm sorry, but these are real issues. And, I'm, and, you know, when you look in the parking lot and you see four broken out windows and cars, you know, with, with duct tape on them and plastic bags holding them together, you're like, am I going to be next? Because clearly they, somebody's smashing windows on these cars. So anyway, that's pretty much my life where I live. And I don't think that compares to my neighbor on this side and my neighbor on that side because I get to watch the rats all day from my house, you know. And, you know, take my front yard, too, while you're at it, you know? And if that happens, you know, like I said, I've asked for security, help with security, and it's like the police are like, oh, we don't help people with that. And I'm like, okay, I gotta figure that out myself, and of course I gotta pay for that myself. And then if they put the sidewalk in, I'm sure nobody's gonna plant a hedge for me, and even if I have to plant it myself, I'm gonna have to pay somebody to do that, and I'm gonna have to pay somebody to maintain it every year. So anyway, that's kind of why I'm here, and I'm just sort of fed up with the whole thing. So to, to be clear, and I... I, <laughs> yeah, that, I yeah. That's, you know, yeah, I came so, unprepared, and it's like no, you heard it. And, I think you came prepared, and so I just want to ask you, you're, you're, not, you're not disputing the, the, the assessor's measurements of the house or anything like that. Your, your concern really is that the... Can, would the neighbors you have make it uh, almost intolerable? It does not raise my property value to have what I have to look at out my front window every day. And, and that would that would that should be reflected in the assessment. Oh, I I think so. And my, and and there's also another point that that you know there's also more people living over there than should be living over there. Or I think there are. I, you know that's my guess because of all the cars that are always lined up the street in front of my house, which brings to mind what happens to them in the winter. Where are they going to park? There's already cars parked where it says don't park here, which means if a fire truck has to get down in there, it can't get down in there when they're already parked in the no parking place. And if I have to get out of my house to go to the hospital or whatever, it's like I don't want to have to be fighting with four people trying to get out of there too. Oh, and then there's the FedEx trucks and the uh, UPS trucks that park in front of my house and idle while they're delivering to everybody down there and walk on my lawn. They just walk, you know, park on the, you know, leave the truck idling, and there you have it. So what I wanted to ask you about another thing you said, which was that it, it sounded like you were saying that this started just a few years ago, that it wasn't this bad before. Is that... Am I, am I right in it, it had gotten progressively worse. It, there was a bad spell at one point in time back in maybe the 90s. And you can ask your police chief because he used to live next door. <laughs> and uh, there was a lot of drug dealing going on, which was, was another issue. They, believe they had the 12-unit uh, mailbox with the lock and keys. Well, every now and then, though, all those doors would be left open, or a lot of those doors would be left open overnight, all at the same time. Why? 
You know, did they all forget to close the doors on the mailbox? You know, so I don't know if that, that still happens a little bit now, but not as much. But, you know, I, I didn't fall off the turnip truck. You know, I got a, I got a lot of, I, believe me, I, I, I have a background that would make your hair spin, you know, and uh, I, I know signals when I see them. And, and it's, it's scary. It's scary now to live there. Let me see if any of the other members of the board have any questions for you. No. How many units are over there? There are 10 units over there. So. But, any, any other and, I, and I'll just say I've been there since uh, 1983, and I've seen the ownership of the apartments change, and I've also seen the the dumpster when I first moved there was down farther into the apartments, and there was a deal where they said, well, we're going to move it up, and we'll always have the door shut of the dumpster. Oh yes, we'll shut the door. We'll make the special beautiful enclosure. Never seen that door shut on that dumpster. Never. Never, okay. you know, have you, so. Have you talked with anybody at Down Street about relocating? I have talked downstairs? to people at Down Street, uh, not lately, because nobody does anything. I talked to them about the dogs. I got attacked by a German Shepherd. The way my house is set up, you can't see when I go out the back door. I go to my car and I get these dogs coming at me. My question a, was specifically about the dumpster. I talked to them about the dumpster. Have they given you any... They've, they've started, they, well, they've started emptying it a little more often. And now the people, have, they put their dirty diapers into the dumpster instead of in front of them. They start, they empty the dumpster more often, but they come at quarter of six in the morning. You know, one, one time, you know, now, I mean, one time during the day or during the week, and it happens more than once. You know, this isn't just a one-time occurrence. They're there, it's 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and they've got the garbage truck out there. You know? So, I don't know. Have you had any conversation with the police about uh, parking spaces, no parking? You, you, it, again, you, I know from my own history and my own experiences, that there will be retaliation if you say anything to anybody about their dogs or their parking. I don't want to have spray paint all over my house. You know, I don't want my window smashed in with duct tape. And, my question, you know, did you ask the police to see if they could say, in the front of your house have no parking zones or things? They have no parking zones in the apartment building parking lot. On your side of the street? No, no. In, 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 <coughs> There are no, uh, people can park on the street. I, I, I get that. They don't park on my side of the street, just the trucks seem to park there for some reason. The big trucks, you know, the FedEx and whatever trucks. The cars seem to park on the other side of the street. But they also park where it says no parking in the apartments, which means there's more cars than there are parking spaces at the apartments. So eventually, I think I'm going to wake up one morning and find a car in my driveway, because where else are they going to park when the winter parking ban comes into effect? Are they going to block me in? I'm, you know, that's just my, how I'm thinking now, because I can see these things are probably going to happen, you know? And maybe I'm just a worry ward, but, you know, when you got cars lined up there every night, you got cars parked in no parking zone, and snow's coming, they got to go somewhere. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, not for the appellant. Um, Marty, just mm -hmm. remind me of where we find the neighborhood condition on the card. That will be on the, uh, the side of the piece, the very bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll say mid good. Oh, so it's like mid century good. I didn't go down far enough. Yeah, all the way at the very bottom. And so interpret that for what is mid good? Um, mid century, good neighborhood. Okay. So mid is the um, construction era of the homes, and good is the rating for the neighborhood. 
I do want to say on my house that said something about I had forced hot air heat or something like that. Um, we have you as a gas wall unit, like a oh, okay. or something. Yeah, I yeah. thought I saw some kind of force. Yeah, I do yeah. have a propane here yeah. and a wood scope that I don't use. But. Okay. Yeah. And just to confirm, Ms. Greca, I think you said that you didn't disagree. So much of what we look at is this thing that we call the card, and I think we have a piece of paper on top of it, but then it looks like this. And that you didn't disagree with the information about your house, that we that, that is correct. The, the house part is correct. It's, it's yeah. correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, we will appoint a, a committee of three members. Um, we have some volunteers to, to do this one. Mary, Kim. Am I free to go? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel well, but I'm oh. sorry. Sarah. So, uh, do we have your email address and phone yes. number? Yes, he, he has that. Okay, so, great. Okay. So the members of the committee will contact you to arrange a time okay. to come over. Sorry I get a little heated about this, but well, you know, it's like... We, we get it. Yeah, I, I hope so. Thanks for coming in. And you don't have to stay. Sarah. I didn't even use Can't. my nifty little thing. <laughs> yeah, it was got it. Yeah. All right. Next, next up, uh, the Shermans at 193 River Street. Hello, uh, folks. <clears throat> Thanks for coming in. I'm oh, sorry, man. Sure. Okay. Are you both going to testify? Okay, Mr. Chairman, you raise your right hand. You solemnly affirm the subject of the and counsels of clergy. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Now, what is the first year from the assessor? Um, reappraisal contract was set an initial value of $235,900. Um, homeowners did attend the informal hearing and changes were made to address condition issues. Uh, no changes were made during the formal grievance. Uh, subject property is built around 1907, has 1,588 square feet of finish above grade with one bathroom, three bedrooms. Um, the home is graded C, average for quality, is in fair condition. Uh, it's given a fair amount of depreciation at 41%. The reappraisal contractor did measure um, and inspect the property. Um, five comparable sales are located in the um, uh, same, same neighborhood, same street, same um, uh, high traffic area. And they're averaging between $110 and $193 to $229 a square foot. Um, subject assessment is $138 a square foot or $219,100. Um, sale two is felt to be the most, uh, most recent and best reflection of current market value. Um, it does sit up off the road. And as you can tell, the, um, the price per square foot on sale number two is much higher, um, but it is the most recent. Um, it, it, and it does sit on River Street, but it sits back. So it doesn't suffer the same um, traffic as a subject property does, um, but it is a recent sale. <clears throat> um, equity comparables are also located on River Street. And they are between $139 and $192 per square foot. The third um, equity comparison, as you can see, that one sold on the previous page um, for $263, and the assessment on that one is $221.1. So the subject property appears to be fairly and equitably assessed at $219,100. Um, any questions on that for me? Well, one question I have is that they're saying that the best comparable is 191 River Street. Mm -hmm. and, Which isn't listed here. Not, not listed as, right. 
Yeah. So you don't, do, don't have those comments? Probably be, would be a reason why I didn't use it. I, I okay. don't know. I'll probably have it. At the okay. moment, it's South. vacant. Uh, Is it? Since I'm putting together a little legend of these um, classifications, what does Traff Mainway? Uh, traffic Mainway. So that's going to be a heavily traveled highway. Heavily traveled highway. Right, we're about 20 feet off of Route 2. Well, uh, do, we, or do we, any members of the board have any other questions for the assessor before we go to the? And you can see the condition adjustments that are on that, um, the, the side with the picture. Yeah. Sorry, Rosie, go ahead. Can you remind me, 41% depreciation means uh, lower than average depreciation or high depreciation? It means high depreciation. So the higher the depreciation, the lower the value. Um, um, if you were to build a house and do nothing to it, Fannie Mae's standards are that it would last 60 years if you did nothing to it. This one has got 60% of its life left to it. Bob, did you have your hand up? I had a question. Oh, the reduction, so you're looking at the condition is fair here. That's what it shows. Was there a different condition before you, the reduction was made from yes. the original? Yes. Uh, they were, call, I believe they were calling it average. Um, and then upon discussion with, with the Shermans, um, they changed it to fair. Okay. So they, they gave it a higher depreciation. Okay, Mr. Sherman. Uh, a couple of questions just on the DCA hearing. Looking at the comparable sales, the uh, price per square foot for our house is listed as 138 for fair condition. For one that's in good condition at 15 River Street is listed as 110 per square foot. And 301 Berlin Street, which is an average condition, is listed as 138, the same as ours. So that's, it, it's, not a, it's not a really, uh, it's not the only way to gauge value. Um, because as you can see with that first comp, the, it, it's a thousand, almost a thousand square feet bigger than yours. So as it gets bigger, the price per square foot is going to go down. Uh, it's just kind of a way to gauge equity that you're not being over assessed. So it's not strictly the how we come up with with, uh, with values. And also the equity comparison on the next page for 161 River Street, mm -hmm. the condition, the dollar per square foot goes down to 192 from yes. 229. That's the um, that's the assessed value versus the sale price. So the first on the first, the first side one are sales. Okay. Yep. And then the assessment. Yep. Okay. Do so you, we try to figure out, you know, you gotta find two um, is it is it assessed fairly when you compare to market value and are you fairly assessed with your neighbors? Okay. So why don't you tell us your story? Well, do you folks have a copy of the letter I sent in? Yes. yes. And do you have a copy of the amendment to that dated October 31st? Yes. Okay. That pretty much lays out. There's the original letter dated August 18th. Yes. And then there's an, um, an addendum to that dated October 31st. Oh, okay. And John emailed that to us later. Yes, I have that. That was listing a house that just barely went up for sale, the Gomez house, which is about twice the size of ours. And though they're assessed at $430,800, they've listed it for two ninety five. dollars Is that the duplex? That's yeah. the duplex. I'm, I got to tell you, I, I mean, so first of all, we're trying to establish market value of April 1, but I saw that listed the other day, and I, I honestly don't know why it's listed so low. I don't know if there's something going on with the family. And they've got a garage. Yeah, there we yeah I, I don't know what's happening there. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell us anything, or do you want to just uh, have us rely on It's what pretty much just relying on the letter. It's all there and in the agenda. Um, okay. Most of it is, I've got, I think, more accurate comparables. I mean, uh, 191 River Street's just on the other side of Blackwell from us. It's about the same size house. It's a little bit older than ours. Uh, it's wood construction rather than brick. Um, Is that a sale? That's 191? 191 was sold 
June, a year ago last June, fall? I don't know. Rivellini bought it. Patty died three years ago, I think. So, yeah. so it, it, I think it was sometime years. in 20. Oh, that's a commercial. Is it that? Is it three unit beside the car wash? No. No. No, this is, a, this is just, just opposite Blackwell Street from us. Okay. Just the other side of that. Uh, Steve Rivellini bought it for $90,000. And it's appraised at a And it was in similar condition as far as repairs to ours at that time. He's done a lot of remodeling since, though I don't know where he's got his permits lined up yet because it's still unoccupied. And he's been done with the remodeling for a while. But right now it's vacant. And it's the idea of other comparables, aside from 191, are there other comparables? I was just saying 191 is the, the most comparable. Okay. Some of the ones he's listed are just right down the street. Okay. These were all built about, that whole block was built about the same time. Uh, there was a granite shed across the street. This was all worker housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from members of the board? So I obviously we have the letter, but I, I what I'm hearing in terms of the things that we're able to consider here that um, water drainage is an issue, and it, I, and I'm just looking at the at the the letter got the information about the comps and um, Mr. Sherman I'm curious if you've looked at the card and if you agree generally with the assessment of, of the condition in the card or if there are errors there that you would like to point out to as us. far as I know the card's fine. I don't know the terminology all that well. Yeah, we don't either. We're <laughs> right. I know. I We're was, learning. I was sitting where you are 35 years ago yeah. when I was on city council. Yeah. And right after I got on city council, we were it was a reappraisal, and I was on the committee. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been on your side of the table. So one of the things that we'll, I, I imagine, we'll consider is the degree of depreciation, and which they're calling, he's calling it 41 percent. Um, yeah, I'm presuming sometime along there will be somebody coming to visit. Yeah. And I can point out to you all the things that haven't been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And fair to, well, we'll have that conversation, but it's listed as fair to average. Yeah, again, I don't know where things fall on that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, or should we just go right to appointing a committee? I haven't done one yet tonight. I'll sign up for it. <laughs> Mary, were you raising your yeah, hand? Yeah, yeah, you volunteered. Great. Okay. And we've got your contact information. Yep. Great. Okay, we will be in touch with you about a couple minutes to inspect. Time for it. Um, hard to know. Mary, the three of us will talk. Okay. Rosie. I just wondered, can we get the property card for 191? I, I can email it to you. Sure. Yeah, great. great. You know, we'll... we'll We've got Thanksgiving coming up, and so yes. Uh, as soon as you said Rivellina, I remember why I didn't use it because I've never known Steve to pay market value for any any home, which is why I didn't use it. <laughs> I, know, I, I said I wasn't going to talk. It was Please. seventy. He bought it for ninety, and I think now it's at one thirty-three or forty. Okay. Yeah, and you said that he's got permits pulled because I know I haven't been in to see the finished work of it yet. So. Yeah, I don't know if he's in five or five minutes yet. He's pretty, he's pretty first good about that. First thing he had to do was replace a whole basement wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That took him all summer yeah. last year. That's why Steve picks these up because there's right. usually something wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming in. We'll be in touch. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Starr, next up is four and a half Sibley Ave. Uh, currently owned by Tracy Starr. 
The reappraisal contractor set a, an initial value of $86,100, um, down from the previous grant list value of $107,400. Um, this is going to be a really tricky property. Uh, it sits on a point zero. Have a seat wherever you're comfortable. Yep. Um, point zero six acre lot on Sibley. Um, it was built around 1900. The home is rated as being in very poor condition. There are 1,424 square feet above grade with one full bathroom and three bedrooms. It does have a full concrete basement. The construction quality is graded as C. Subject has no functional kitchen and one bath that would take substantial work to become functional. Therefore, the dwelling is, giving a, is given a 95% depreciation. Um, so we were talking about that earlier. It's got about 5% life left to it. Um, subject property had a privacy fence installed by four Sibley, which partially um, blocks access to the subject property. Um, the subject does have a right of way, which is shown on an attached, um, the, the third attached, or two, three, fourth attachment to your, to your handout there. The, the subject property does receive um, a reduction in assessment for access issues and for lot issues. Um, there is also an issue with the water shut off to the subject property. It runs through the neighbor at 4 Sibley. It runs through the basement. Um, the city worked with the property owner of 4 and a half Sibley and 4 Sibley to try to remedy that situation, um, but were unable to come to an agreement, so the subject property currently has no water. <clears throat> Comparable sales, 12 North College Street. That was a, um, a gutted home when it sold. 14 George Street was a foreclosure. 196, that was listed also as being a very poor home when it sold. Um, it did sell outside of the, of the um, three-year sales study, but there was a limited amount um, of comparable sales to, to find within the city. <clears throat> Equity comparables. Um, from a couple of weeks ago, 71 Berlin Street, that's a, um, a property that a couple of you guys will be working on for the Morse, the Morse family. Mm -hmm. um, the assessment on that one is 77,500, um, which is at $59 a square foot. 11 Hubbard Street is a foundation only at $97. The assessment's 87,200. Um, and 17 River, that was currently uninhabitable and the assessment on that one is similar to the subject at 87,300, um, roughly the same size square footage. So it appears that the, um, all of the negative aspects of the subject property were taken into consideration when the assessment of $86,100 was set. Onto the property record card. Um, if you look at the side with the P, it has the land values down at the very bottom. You'll see that there's an easement, a negative easement adjustment and a negative location adjustment. Um, so what we're saying here is that that lot, if, if there was no issues to it, would sell for 125,000. So given the negative factors of access, um, the assessed value of the land alone is $76,700. And on the very top of that same page, you'll see the building value of $9,400. So the building itself is given pretty minimal value. Um, and that's what gives us a total assessed value of $86,100. On the other side, the side with the picture and the sketch, um, there are notes of the location under the comments section about the fence, the water and sewer, the poor condition of the property. You'll see that the bath, um, the bath features, the bathroom is rated as poor, kitchen's rated as poor. Overall, the home, like I said earlier, was given a 95% depreciation. Um, so the depreciation, I mean, it, there is still a building standing there, so there is some value to it, but it's pretty minimal. Um, next is the mat. <coughs> Thank you. 
This survey was done for 4 Sibley Avenue, and you can see just to the right of it, there is an 8-foot common access easement granting access to the subject property. Um, any questions on any of this? Okay, can lots of questions. Yeah, let's start with Kim. Where is the fence on your map? This is done before the fence, but it runs. Um, if you look at the dark, the, the dark line of number four, Sibley, just to the north of it, there is a, um, a retaining wall. So it runs along that fence. It runs along that property line. There's the fence. Okay. There's my house. There's the fence. This thing is 60 foot long. It is taller this, than this, I am. Mr. Starr. Okay. In his handout, there should be. There's. There are lots of good pictures that'll show show where the fence is. Um, but it does. It does stop. I'm not a surveyor, but it stops near. Uh, this was all approved by the zoning department. Um, I was told by the zoning administrator that they visited the site and that the fence is legal. Mary, I think you had your raised hand, or, and then Sal. This is not, per se, a commentary on the uh, depreciation or the quality of this current building, but I'm curious if there comes a point when you're looking at, you, you, at a property that is so far deteriorated that you say there is no value to the um, structure and that you just do the land. It absolutely will come to that point. Um, it can, I have seen cases where it'll detract value having a property there or having a building and there. The building there. Um, yeah. This, it's not leaking. It's structurally upright. There is a, um, an addition to it that should probably be taken off. But the structure itself, I, vis I, I visited this property myself. Mm -hmm. There is still value to the building. It's a contractor special, no doubt about it, but there is value to it being there. Uh, Could you elaborate a little bit more about the water situation? There's a, there's a city water shutoff that's in the basement of number four? Yeah, that originally, as I understand the story, it was built. Um, dad and son or dad and daughter, whatever the situation was, and the water for four, or the water goes through the basement of four Sibley to four and a half Sibley. There was an issue. The, the neighbors got into an argument. The owner of number four shut the water off. That is a lie. Wait, the wait, city of Montpelier shut the water Mr. off. Mr. Starr, you will okay. have a chance to testify, so please. Thank you. Well, I have. So just hold up. We did not get in an argument. Well, just if I apologize, but at least get the facts correct. The we, city of Montpelier turned off the turn off switch inside four and a half, four siblings basically. Okay, we'll consider that a question. And I'd like you to stop interrupting. I know you are very upset about this situation. Uh, do you know the situation with the water? Yeah, so the city tried to uh, remedy the situation by offering um, um, a solution to, to reroute the water to four and a half Sibley. Um, and there was no, there was no agreement between the owner of four and a half Sibley and the city of Montclair to reroute water to the property. No agreement between the city and four and a half? Correct. To move the water? What about Correct. four? Four shut it off and refused to turn it back on. So the city was trying to find an alternate way to get that the water to, um, to the subject property. Hmm. Wow. Go ahead, Karen. Um, another question about the, the fence and the easement and the access. Um, it's, you, you said that it partially blocks access to the property. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe exactly how that works and what kind of, you know, can you drive a car up there and park it and get in and out or there is a, There's a car stuck behind that fence now which you would have to get um, lifted out. Yeah, they, they put, so there was, a, there was an abandoned, I don't know if the vehicle works, I couldn't tell you, but there is a vehicle on the other side of the fence. The fence was put up. And the, and the vehicle is stuck there. But there is um, approximately eight feet between the fence and another property to walk up into the subject property. So you could so there is access. access it by on foot, yes. but not with a car. Uh, correct, yeah. Because there's, so with the fence, if, if you were to park a car, there's also a, 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 a 
cement retaining wall, which is starting to collapse. So, so this right of way is uh, it's eight feet. Looks like it's four feet on. Um, it's four feet on the property of number four, and it's four feet on the property next door. I would assume so. At yes. The, at the entrance. That's what it looks like. The survey. Uh, and so you. You could, so that's correct, the way it is, it's, ha it's four and four. And then you, you could, could, could you block that right of way? No, but could you park in that right of way? I don't know what, um, four and a half has use of that right of way. I don't know if there's any written agreements of what they're allowed to park, I, I, that I don't know. And the right of way ends where it ends in the, in the diagram? And, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Okay, Mr. Oh, Carrie and then Bob. I'm still trying to get a grip on this fence. Sure. Um, does the fence extend onto the right of way? Uh, it, it stops at, I, I believe, and I, and I don't know exactly, but um, the, what the zoning administrator told me is that it stops on the property line. So I would assume it to so come to that. So does it go into the right of way? In the middle the of the right of way. Uh, I assume. Is the building occupied at all? No. Okay. No. Oh, it's not occupied? No, it, it couldn't be right now. Um, in my description, the, the kitchen is not functional. The, there's, the bathroom doesn't work. There's no water. It is heated. Um, he's got a little small space heater in the basement. And just to clarify about the bathroom, mm -hmm. there's, there's only one bathroom and it's non-functional. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Would it be functional if there were water service in the building or not? I would assume so. It, yeah. So it's not that it doesn't have a toilet, it doesn't have a toilet. The, the fixtures are there. Okay. Yes. All right. Mr. Starr, you've been patient. Please raise your right hand. Okay. Now, I, I am, my hearing is not the greatest. So I'm hearing 50 to 90 percent of what everyone is saying. Okay. But just, you know. Great. Start by having you raise your right hand. Oh, uh, yeah, one or the other. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Now, why don't you tell us your story about this property? First of all, everyone should have received Yep, we got it. A PDF of this. And that also includes the appeal for the July hearing that I had with Marty, which addresses a lot of what he mentions about the right of way and some other things. And quite honestly, you know, this, some of this stuff goes back to 2012 when the city of Montpelier turned off the shutoff switch in Fort Sibley's basement. And in reference to what Marty was saying about some type of agreement, that was an agreement through the justice of appeal or something, I can't, anyway, where I was supposed to come to an agreement with four siblings, with four siblings water on and my water off. And Yvonne, I believe is the name, remember this is 2012, only took, and at that time there was a different owner, Terry. Anyway, you would know all this stuff if you read the stuff. So I cannot recover, I cannot go through all of this stuff in the five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes you're gonna allow me. You have to read this stuff. Uh, this appeal, for example, the right of way is between four Sibley and six Sibley. So that does not, give access to my home that, to my understanding, only allows service vehicles, you know, a typical service vehicle might be like a propane tank 
to drive up the driveway between forcibly and sixably. But that is the extent of that right away. This fence, again, if you've seen a picture of it, this thing, and I, you know, again, all of you should have received this PDF, is, you know, I'll, I'll just read it from here. 50, I want to say 60 foot long, but it's 50 feet, 56 feet long, six feet high and is solid, you cannot get through it. I, as far as who lives there, this is my home. You know, if, again, if you read this information, there is background on how and why I bought this house. You know, the summary is I came to Vermont a long time ago to go to college, I was not able to do that. And circumstances, I ended up buying this house instead. Uh, that's the short version. But my home between no heat, no water, and that is totally, again, you have to read this material, that is the city of Montpelier who did those things, and then basically they just walked away and said, well, you know what, You're, that's just tough luck for you. And that was for me. And then in 2019, Ben Davis No put up this wall, basically blocking all access to my home. And a lot of that material, what Marty went over this appeal is dated July 31st, which again would have been included in here. So the right of way, you know, the house is, I have, the house is, has no value. I cannot do anything with it. I have trouble even getting there. I don't even want to go to my house because it's so damn depressing. This is my home. How many of you people have a home? This isn't an apartment building. This isn't a novelty thing. This is my home. Now, yes, I happen to be living somewhere else, obviously. You know, I have asked a contractor to work on my home, tree works because I have a lot of homes, a lot of trees in the back of my house. I still have one more. And that was in 2019. 2019, this was obviously put in two, you know, ap, you know, after that. Tree Woods had no problem. Said, yeah, we'll, we'll knock down a whole bunch of these trees. I have one left because it's a much bigger one and I didn't have it cut down at that time because I had like 20 or 30 of most of the, the relatively small ones. Tree works won't even, they'll just say, look, we won't even give you an estimate. We will not touch that house. And the only difference is that fence. Now, as far as, you know, this thing here, by the way, this is misleading. This is the back of the house. It's built on a hill. There's Foster Street above. This is going, however, whoever took this picture, maybe Marty, maybe Matt, I don't know, the contractor, who they subcontracted to whatever the appraising office it was. But anyway, someone took this picture. This, you have to, you have to climb up the hill and go way up close to the back end of Foster Street to take this picture. Our, it's built on a hill. There is the subsidized apartment, uh, land trust, I can't think of the name, that has, you know, over here, you, uh, you can't see in this one right here, maybe you can see it, uh, where you have the low-income apartment, you know, and then you have, on this side you have six sibling. You cannot get to my home. I cannot do anything with this. And regardless of what 
Marty says about a right of way. Again, the right of way is between forcibly and sixably. I, practically speaking, do not see any way that a contractor can realistically work on my home. And again, I go through that in this appeal. And actually, one other thing that I noticed that was kind of interesting that you went over with Marty, which I didn't notice before when you gave me the, was that all these homes, 71 Berlin Street, 11 Hubbard Street, 17 River Street, and I think there's a few more, 12 College Street. How many of these homes have a wall built in front of their home? Blocking access, you know, yeah, go ahead, compare my home. You know, you can say, yeah, well, you know, my bathroom and my kitchen and this and it's like it's this low grade, that and whatever. But you know what? Who has a fence built like this in front of their home? I have been in Vermont for 30, 35 years, I don't know, 1984 maybe, something like that. I have, you know, I've been all over Vermont over the years. I've done tons of things. I've probably traveled just about every single road and just about probably every single back road at one time. I have never seen a fence built like this, especially a home on a hill where there's really no other way to get to it. And so to, you know, it's kind of disingenuous to say, oh, well, you know, look at all these homes. And we'll just do a comparison to these homes. These homes do not have a big, gigantic wall in front of their home. And on top of that, why use this picture? You know, you, you probably couldn't even tell that you had to, like, really do some climbing to even get to this point. You know, literally, you have to climb up a hill. It's a pretty, I've been up there. It's a pretty steep climb. Why don't you just take, a, why don't you just take this picture and show that wall? And that's a little disingenuous. I can't do anything with my home. And regardless what Marty said about a contractor and this and whatever, you know, yes, it has no water, it has no heat. And by the way, the bathroom would be pretty much fine. All the fixtures in the bathroom would fine. The tub, uh, there is the tile, there's a little, because I had some plumbing work done on the tub, and so the tiles is torn out of there. But basically everything works. Uh, actually, just about everything works in the house, including the kitchen. Uh, there's really nothing. Uh, cosmetics, mostly. The kitchen just needs to be... Uh, there, there, there is actually a, a light up there, like one of these things like that probably needs to be torn down and redone. Uh, and, but most of it is, is cosmetics. Everything works in the house. It's actually a pretty damn good house. You know, I had the roof replaced in 2000, you know, 2005, 2010. Uh, I painted it about the same time. Uh, I couldn't do it now. Thank goodness I did. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this thing. If anything goes wrong, you know, this thing here, this porch right there, I'd like to hire a contractor to fix that porch. That would probably be about a $600 job, I'm guessing. I don't know. I won't even call a contractor. I mean, how the hell is a contractor supposed to fix that porch? That's probably just a $600 job, maybe. You know, where, where, they're, where are they supposed to work? I mean, they're going to work here. They're going to work in front of, between, you know, that's a day job easily. Maybe a couple of days out, maybe a week job. How is a contractor even, you know, what are they, you know, they're going to need a circular saw, they're going to need a table saw, they're going to need all the equipment, they probably have a work van or something of the equivalent. I don't know, I won't even call a contractor. You know, a contractor is going to look at that and say, I can't do that job. 
you know, I can't even barely move a banker box to and from my home. You know, what about appliances? What about furniture? Anything. And again, all of this stuff is, you know, just read this material. I can't go over all this stuff. You know, this is a lot of material. Read it. You know, if you want to know how much my house is, I was talking to John here just a little while ago. And if you want to know how much my damn house is worth, that's how much my house is worth. Because it's worthless. I can't do a damn thing with it. And this is my home. I'm supposed to write in this home. This is my home that I did, that I bought because for various reasons I could not go to college. You know, it's a long story, read it, you know, I don't know, it would make a good soap opera maybe. But I don't know. You know, I could go on obviously boy, he's really, you know, teed up about this. Well, who wouldn't be? This is my home. You know, yes, regardless of where I may be staying right now, obviously I ain't living here. You know, I just hope that maybe somebody in this room, obviously not the city of Montpelier, because if the city of Montpelier wanted to, they have had 10 plus years. I just hope somebody in this room decides to do the right thing. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna... Okay, Bob, you've got the first question. Yeah. When, when was the last time you were able to live in this house? What year? Uh, well, it's probably... <laughs> Quite honestly, 2011. Because that's when, that's when the whole thing started with my water. And, uh... I made it, you know, again, that is outlined in here. But both of us, Terry Gelfetti, who was the owner of Horse Italy at that time, and myself was going to go to the, uh, helping out here, Marty, the community development program, whatever, community justice. Uh, in, in Montpelier, and we were going to get a low income loan to fix the water line. The water line did actually break, but it was in it was in the yard because it goes from my house under the ground, about three feet, into four siblings, and then out the other front end, and then down four siblings into the main water line. And there was a break in the leak, a break in the water line in four siblings yard. And so we were both going to go to the city of Montpelier, planning and development, and get a low-income loan, and and have it fixed. You know, and the low-income loan is where you get the, you know, in this case, the water line fixed, and then it's a loan paid for by the city of Montpelier, and then you don't have to pay it back until you sell your home. And I was in the process of we you know, we were both. There was a lot of conditions that we needed. Uh, we needed three references or, ref or estimates. And there was a lot of, and again, that is all, I think, pretty much outlined in here. You know, there, that, that, you know, that's actually the city of Montpelier's check that they paid to, uh, that they paid to have it. But anyway, at the same time, I also had we all. I also had custody of my granddaughter, and this was in. You know, I actually, I, I was forcibly had completed the application process before I did, which then subsequently they had the water line fixed. And I was still in the process of, you know, I was actually doing two things at the same time. I was in probate court for my granddaughter. And at the same time, 
I was doing this. So the logical thing is have the water line fixed. I would finish my application, submit my application to the planning and development, and then I would pay the other half. But then when the, and then also obviously the water was turned on on February 29th. 2012 by the city of Montpelier in Terry's basement, in Fort Sibley's basement. And that was by the city of Montpelier. And they did not notify me. And actually on that date, I was in a full day probate hearing for my granddaughter on February 29th, 2012. And that's when Four siblings' water was turned on because it was initially turned off back in like November or December of 2011. So the water for four siblings was turned back on from the city main. However, in the basement of four siblings, the city of Montpelier, who had who was doing all whatever, they also had the plumber that they paid turned off my, there's a shut off switch to the water that goes, you know, that right before it goes out the foundation between four and four and a half. And since then, I haven't really been able to do anything with my home. So that was 2012. You know, I lost water, I lost heat, and I mean, what are you supposed to do with a home? You know, after that, the city of Montpelier just walked away and said, look, now it's a problem between you and Four Sibley. But the problem was, is that Four Sibley had water, and I didn't. And then Four Sibley, Terry Delfetti, started asking for all these you know, they, through the, uh, can you help me out here, Marty? What is the downstairs in the basement? I think the, it was community justice. Hmm? Community justice, is that what it's called? I, I honestly community, don't know. Community Justice Center? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think her name was Yvonne, maybe? Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I don't think she works there any longer. No. And they came up with this ridiculous contract that I was supposed to sign. Uh, that basically said that I was not allowed in Terry's basement, and if there was a problem, sight unseen, a plumber would would be called, and they would fix it, and then we would s split. And anyway, and that was a watered down version. There was a whole bunch of things that Terry wanted, and you know, the simple solution would have been just turn back on the water, the the water turn off switch. I would have finished the application, and then that would have been it. Uh, but no, I have not really been able to do, to do anything with my home since 2012. Mary. Um, the, in the assessor's information, he says the home is heated with a hot water system. So do you have heat in your, in your home? No. So there is no heat? No, it's board heat. It's what? Board heat. I need okay. water for heat. Okay. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, so and also I bought a brand new boiler in 2010. Yeah. That was a three thousand dollar boiler. And if you had water, yes. What? It, how would it be heated? Is it electric? Is it propane? If I had water, can you? I'm, I'm, yeah, I understand. If you had water, how would it be heated to provide heat in the home? It would be heated by, uh, by a boiler. It's a propane based it's boiler. A okay, so there it's is a boiler propane. in the base. Yeah, it's yeah. propane. Okay. It's propane gas. Actually, yeah. I have two propane yeah. gas that are completely filled. Okay, let us keep. And, and do you also have electricity into the home? I have been putting. Uh, the first couple of years, I was putting a small electric heater. You know, the kind that you buy that won't so, do. My question, I mean, I know it's not No, I don't have, no, the only heat in the house is the yeah. propane. Got it. But you obviously also have electricity that serves the home. 
Yeah, that electricity is fine. Is there. Got it. Yeah, the electricity is yeah. practically the only thing that still works in that place. Got it. Thank you. Yes, um, you're Kim. Marty, you say the land has value, but I don't see how it has value if you can't get water to it. Through the right, there can there is a solution to it. There is a way to do it. Um, I'm not a legal, I'm not a real estate attorney, but it's my understanding you can't create a piece of land if there's no access to it. So I believe from what I have seen in the research, you can run water through the right of way. And that right of way also gives you access to the property. That's, that's my opinion. Um, you may have to check with an attorney, but I don't believe you can create four and a half Sibley with no access to it. Uh, Mr. Uh, and, and also, if I can also, um, your, your question in the, the picture that's used on the property record card, if you look in, in the assessor file, there's six other pictures. That just happens to be the one that came yeah. up on the card. Right. There's, there are pictures of the fence. There's pictures of the front of the property. So if I don't show up to work tomorrow and someone looks at my records, they're going to see several pictures of the subject property, not just the one that he's pointing out. Whose car is this? I believe Mr. Starr, I don't know. Is that your car behind the fence? Yes, that is my car. Yeah. So, and, and so that car was there when he built the fence? Yes. It, is, was it, is it not working? Is that why you couldn't move it? <laughs> it's not working now. But could, would it have been possible okay, to the, get a the idea, the idea for the car is three homes at one time anyway when people relatively speaking, tried to work with one another, pre carry maybe. Three homes use that driveway. And at one time, that, you know, you can probably fit maybe anywhere between eight and 12 cars from, and you can't see all of it, let's go back to, you know, because there is Sibley, there is a, a poured concrete, and then right at the flat, which is right at the face of the front of Four Sibley. And then obviously you have, and then it goes over here, and then it's like an L shape. You can fit maybe between eight and 12 cars in there if you really jam them in there. And at one time, they had, I've, I've owned my home since uh, 1980. 87, and it was 85 when I moved in here. Sorry about that. So I bought my home in 1987. It's my, it's my, so the point of the car is in the winter time, when my car is back, because my car would be back the furthest from all the other ones, either I would do the shoveling to get to my car, and then everyone else would drive up there because I would have to shovel the furthest to get back to my car because my house is the back, back to the furthest. Or I would not shovel and everyone else would pull out of the driveway and my car would get stuck there. So the point of the car was so that I could have a car in my driveway for my home and I could still do my fair share of the shoveling, but at the same time, I wasn't doing shoveling for three homes where no one, because I did that for years and years and years. I would do the, all the shoveling, and I would say, look, could you help me out here four and six simply? Nobody would, but, the only, but my car would get shoveled in there, or snowed in there, and the only way to get out was to shovel the entire driveway. So finally, I came up with a compromise. I would have a car up there. I would shovel my little, you know, between four and four and a half Sibley. And I would do my fair share of shoveling. It would not be a working car. But at the same time, I would still have a car. And then if four and four Sibley and six Sibley wanted to do their fair share of shoveling, and park up there, they will actually have to park. And that's why the car is there. And, and so are we right, am I right in thinking that this right of way 
is where the people at six and four also park their cars. Okay, I I don't quite understand the question, but let me first the right of way. No, there is actually another right of way on the other side of Four Sibley, but that's something totally sure. different. But I believe the right of way that you're referring to is the right of way between Four and Six Sibley. Is that where they park? Uh, actually, before Ben Davis, no. And to a certain extent, maybe a little bit before Terry, they would just park anywhere. You know, realistically, you can probably f comfortably fit maybe two cars on four Sibley side if they're relatively small cars, two cars on six Sibley side, and then one car be pre wall blocking access to my home between four and four and a half Sibley. And for the most part, that is. You know, there was, a, there was my car between four and four and a half. And then there was either one or, and or two cars between, on the, you know, two on the side, four sibly, two on this side, six sibly. And generally speaking, 80% of the, again, when I say 80% of the time, that goes back to 1987. And for the most part, that is certainly pre-Ben Davis knowing the wall, and to a certain extent, pre-Terry Galfetti, who bought the home in 2011. Okay. So most of, most of the time, people work together. Okay. Any other questions from members of the board? We're going to appoint a committee of three people to come. We'll, we'll have three people come to look at your place. Yes, please do. Um, Good luck. Do we have care? I was just there uh, today. It is. Carrie, Bob, and Sal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Carrie Brown, Bob Gross, and Sal Alfano will be the members of the committee. Two dollars. Yes. Do you need me there? Uh, they should. Yeah, you should be there. We have your contact information. You have what? Your contact information. Uh, he has their a phone number. Is best. What's the phone number for you? It's four seven six. It's a house in Barry. Okay. Four seven six seven zero three two. Seven zero three two. Okay. Okay. And a, a lot of times you'll just get a message there. Just leave a message. It's a landline. It's not a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Just leave a message, and I will get the message. But that's the probably that four seven six seven zero three two is the best, and. It, for the most part, if you give a time and a date, uh, I'm assuming Monday through Friday, and probably between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock is probably a good time frame. I think most people can work around that. Do you have an email? Hmm? Do you have an email address? Yes. Can you uh, sometimes? It's yeah. Uh, it's in that packet. I have, I, a, and I have mail well. for you. You want to use the Hotmail one? Well, probably the Gmail, because the Hotmail is telling me that it's full, like, I mean, it's Hotmail. So I've had it since 2000 and God knows when. And they're saying that the gigabyte is full. And I, as far as I know, I'm still receiving email there. But the Gmail is exactly the same thing. It's C R. T S R R at gmail.com. And it's exactly the same thing for Hotmail, C R T T S R R at Hotmail.com, but probably the Gmail. And the thing is that I don't really check it, I don't have a cell phone. So uh you know, I try to check it maybe every two weeks to a month. So the phone message is probably, uh, you'll probably get an answering machine, but just say, this is the Board of Authority. We would like to meet you at your home in Montpelier. And just give any day, Monday through Friday, for the most part, you know, 12 to 3, and I should be able to be there, and a call and a callback number. All right. Thank you for coming in. This is okay. this is mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah.
But you know, really read this material. Just consider it as a you know nonfiction. You know, I, I think it makes good good reading, but gotcha. I might be a little bit biased on that one. Thanks. Okay, you all set? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a nice night. You too. Yeah. Next up. That's your stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you Charles Woolman? Yes. Okay. We've not met in person, so I apologize for not recognizing no problem. you. No Okay. Um, <clears throat> so next up is uh, 62 Terrace Street, owned by the Wilners. Um, reappraise the contractor set an initial value of 433.300. Um, property owner did come to the informal and formal uh, meetings. No changes were made. Home sits on a 0.35 acre lot on Terrace Street. Neighborhood, um, again, is considered traffic good, um, similar to um, the yeah. earlier report, the Dale property. The property is a one and a half story Cape built around 1953. Home is rated as very good condition. Um, as measured and inspected by the reappraisal contractor. There's 1,488 square feet of um, finish, one full bathroom, one three-quarter bath, a half bath, two bedrooms. The basement is 52% finished. Home is graded C plus, um, so be um, better than average uh, for quality build. Three comparable sales. 62 and 29 Terrace Street. Um, 62 Terrace Street is, of course, the subject property itself. Um, that sold for $490,000 in July of 2022, selling for $329 per square foot. Um, as you can see there, again, it's in very good condition. 29 Terrace Street is in good condition, $315 a square foot or $410,000. 22 Pine. Pinewood Road, uh, sold for $402,000 or $371,000, uh, sorry, $371 a square foot. The assessment of the subject property is $433,300 or $291 per square foot. Um, first sale, obviously, is felt to be the best comparison. The, um, Best example of, of current market value as it's the subject itself. Equity comparisons, um, similar properties on the same same street, the same neighborhood, same street, uh, same build, same quality. They're in the let's see, 295 to 461 range. Um, within well within the subject property assessment of 433. Dollar per square foot is anywhere between 211 per square foot and 296 dollars per square foot. Uh, subject property is assessed at 291 dollars per square foot. Um, so it appears that the the subject property at 62 Terrace Street is fairly assessed at 433,300. Sales of comparisons and the subject itself support this value. Home was listed in May of 2022 for 434 and sold July 15th of 2022 for 490. Um, it is rated as being in much better condition, which is reflected in the um, um, per square foot value of the subject property. On the property record card itself, you'll see um, on the side with the sketch and the picture, Depreciate, excuse me, depreciation on the home is very low. Um, it is given a minimal amount of depreciation because it is in very good condition. Um, it's a very well kept home, as you can see in the comments section. Uh, bathroom is in average to good condition, as is the three quarter and a half bath. Uh, on that same side of the page over on the right hand side below the sketch you'll see sub area detail and that will tell you that the subject property is 52 percent finished in the basement 
Um, other side will give you the, um, the land breakdown and the neighborhood description. Um, it also does break down if you're looking at the, the building value versus the land value at the very top of the page, too. Questions on this one? Rosie? Um, so I see that the, the quality is C plus, or is average plus. Um, and in the comments, it says uh, original finishes with mixed updates. Um, what makes it very good? Like the build, the quality of the build. So it was built um, using quality materials, um, uh, two by six construction versus two by four. I don't On the front it says the it's just an example. <coughs> it's an example. Oh, okay. It's the, the, the construction, so the, the quality is going to be the construction, the C plus. Yeah, so that's no, the construction. I, I see that. What I'm asking is what makes it very, you're saying that it's in very good condition. Oh, very little depreciation. It's been kept up um, as time goes on. So even though it's like the original finishes because yep. it's been kept up, that's yep. what makes it very good. Correct. And, and it was inspected by the reappraisal contractor, so they did get inside. Okay. Marty, is it, a, is it a walkout basement? On the, is it on a hill there? It is. Wait, that's yeah. a, uh, I, I, would you like me to clarify? Please. Yes. We'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It might be easier. I don't have it on here. We'll have you testify in just a minute. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to answer. Yeah, yeah sure. That's a, just a factual yeah. thing. Anybody else? Any other questions from the board? All right. We solemnly affirm the subject of pains and penalties of perjury. This and you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. You're on. Okay. Uh, so I did give a report. I think apparently has been handed out. I sort of remade it when I saw what Mario was going to say a little bit. It's a little more concise, but uh, essentially a couple. Well, of things. if you want us to have that, feel free to pass it around. Okay. I don't think I have enough for everyone. Maybe just for the three committee. Oh, inspection. Sure. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, so a few things. If I look at similar properties in our neighborhood, and I look at the square foot value of those homes, if you subtract the value of the land, I see a pretty marked difference between mine and theirs. And, and quite frankly, I don't see the justification for the very good ranking for our house when compared to those. And obviously, the folks that come to look at it can make that. I think that's kind of a judgment call. But um, you know, so for instance, if you, if you subtract the value of the land just to normalize it based on this paper right here and then you look at it our home is valued at 224 dollars a square foot and typical homes in the neighborhood are about 129 to 198 dollars a square foot our home doubled in value between the last uh, time any renovation work was done and this assessment and then typical homes more like 28 to 67 percent um, if you look at the grade of construction at sea for us it's very good and again um you know we have the original kitchen cabinets that have been painted over a number of times and the original windows from 1950. Um, and if you look at the home immediately adjacent to ours if you're facing it number 60 is it's literally almost exactly identical i would say the difference is their windows have been replaced with vinyl windows ours have not i believe they were built within a year of each other almost certain it's the same builder, exact same means and methods of construction. Uh, their home is valued at $295,000. Ours is $433,000. So the spread between those two is marked, and I can't see any way that that is justified, uh, even if the, there are some differences in the quality of construction. Um, I've also been in a few of the other homes in the neighborhood and they all seem to be of fairly typical construction uh, and interior finishes. I am not an expert in comparable sales, but I will say the two that have been offered here, 29 Terrace Street, I believe that property is a duplex. Uh, so I'm not sure it's really a comparable sale. I think if you look it up in the listing, um, which I would imagine would drive the price of that up, it also makes it not comparable. And then 22 Pinewood Road is on 0.9 acres, I believe, so a significantly different amount of land. Um, and if you subtract the value of that land, 
that's actually valued at about $258 a square foot. So again, seems significantly larger or like higher in square foot value than the rest of the subject properties. Um, so I think there's maybe something going on with the model for how homes that did not sell recently are being appraised versus how homes that have sold recently have been appraised, especially given the crazy market dynamics that we're in. For instance, the home directly across the street from us is 61 Terrace Street. It's appraised here at $449,000. It sold, or they closed on the sale about three months after uh, the values were supposed to be set. So that was July of 23 for $575,000. So it, if the model is creating values that are that off the actual sales value, I don't know that it's necessarily fair to penalize us because we've been sold recently. It feels a little bit like, um, you know, when I look at the bath features, the kitchen, the rating of everything that's average to good, and then I look at the overall depreciation of very good, it feels a little bit like the value was backed into to get a little bit closer to the sale value. Um, so anyway, I welcome you to come by, and I think that's what I have to say. Okay. Thank you for your time. We have questions. You, you bought this home July 22 for 419. Correct. Yeah. For 490. Correct. Any up, Rosie? This is more for Marty. Um, so I'm seeing under building permits, uh, bath and garage repairs. Those are kind of the only recent renovations. Yes. <clears throat> Mary. And so you purchased the home last year for 490. Were in. I am guessing that that is a compelling issue when we say, you know, what's its value? Well, you said its value was 490. I am curious if there were any circumstances in your life that made you decide that you needed to pay less or more than the value. Was it an arm's length sale or was something else going on? That you can help us evaluate why it's not worth 490 and you thought it was worth 490 a year ago sure i think the difference is the value that i would be willing to pay for this home is similar to the value that i would be willing to pay for numerous other homes that are appraised for significantly less right so it's not that i don't think i could resell it for four hundred ninety thousand dollars it's that i think that my neighbor's home that's valued at two hundred ninety five thousand dollars would likely sell for somewhere in the $400,000 range. Or, you know, if you look, I, I could go through them, but on the second page of this, uh, there's a little bit of spreadsheet with similarly other value, other homes in the neighborhood that I believe are undervalued. And so it, it feels to me like the if your home has not sold recently, at least in our neighborhood, the way that the value of your house is generated based on sort of this mm -hmm. is not equivalent to what it would be valued at if it had sold recently. So it's not as much that you're disputing the value of your home. And I, I heard what you said in terms yeah. of, you know, maybe factoring out land and stuff like that. But it's more that your neighbors are under appraised. Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, I believe the way that the law is written by the state of Vermont is that you should, your home should be valued in a way that's equitable to those around mm -hmm. you, right? And so the fact that we paid what I think I could probably sell for to some degree is a little bit irrelevant to this conversation to me. Part of the conversation is are the values of equivalent homes in Montpelier in, in the same location or similar location equivalently valued? Not necessarily, right? Like, I believe if any of those homes sold, they would they would sell for similar values, and, and would they then be valued that? For instance, the home across the street that is now uh, appraised at four hundred and let's see, uh, four hundred and forty nine thousand, which sold for five hundred seventy five thousand. Right? Obviously, there's some delta between the value that's being generated through this process and the value that's being generated through market arms length transactions. So given that line of, of thought, looking at the assessor's equity comps table, do you I didn't have a have chance to go through all of them. I mean, I think that the easiest one for me is 60 Terrace Street because it's my neighbor's home and I've 
fairly familiar with it and what it looks like. Um, and it literally, if you stand in front of my house and you look at their house, it's not a carbon copy, but it's very close. I mean, they've replaced the windows with vinyl windows. I think if you put our original windows in their home, you would be like, whoa. It's literally, they, like, the picture looks pretty much exactly like this. Um, and then as far as interior conditions, I haven't been in their house. I, I can't honestly speak to it, but um, I think it's 61 and 63, the two homes across the street. I'm quite close to those people, and I've spent a fair amount of time in their homes, and, and I think they're of similar interior conditions. But again, I assume whoever looks will have been in some other homes and can evaluate that object, more objectively. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Can I, st Marty? Yes. I can still ask Marty a question. Sure. sure. So, to get from the sales price of the home down to four thirty-three, <laughs> you base it basically on comparables. Is that how you get from a sales price, which is a fair market value, to an assessed value? Yeah, as he just pointed, there's, there's, there's two, well, there's actually three things we worry about. Is it, um, is the data correct, which I think we all agree the data is correct. Um, is the home assessed fairly compared to sale price? And is it compared, is it um, equitably assessed compared to neighbors? So to, to come up with a value, the reappraisal contractor did a three-year sales study um, from April 1st of 2020 to April 1st of 2023. That's where they come up with a dollar per square foot, the, all the land values and everything. So it is all derived from sales, yes. And the home was listed, I mean, it was listed right at where the, the reappraisal contractor had set the initial value of four, 433. So, and it was listed for sale at 434. So COVID is definitely, um, I've got a list here of, I don't know, 35 homes that have sold since the first of this year that are selling at 30, 40, and 50 percent over assessed value. It's it's just the way the market's going in Montpelier right now. Um, go ahead, Rosie. So um, you were saying that you didn't think there was any con or, um, any testing what was on the card, um, but I think that I'm hearing the appellant say that you think the quality. Correct. Yeah. Is, I mean, I would say you're contesting the very good. I, I, I haven't measured it, right? But presumably the square footage, I believe, is approximately correct. Th those things, the, the questions I have really, yes, are related to some of the um, softer things, right? Which is like, are you rating it average good, very good, et cetera? And I think when I looked around and tried to find homes that were listed very good, it's a pretty rare rating from what I've seen. and. There are new, brand new homes that have been built in the last year. I think there's one up on the hill, and it's not rated very good. So it seems like a stretch to me to assign that value to our property, which was built in 1953. I mean, I, I admit it's, it's in generally good shape, but I don't think it's markedly better than any of the properties surrounding it, or certainly not a house that was built in the past few years. And there's numerous, you know, there aren't a lot of houses that don't look good, but if you look at most of the new ones, I do not think very good is the condition assigned to most of them. Um, I was going to ask Marty, uh, what, what do we make of uh, the taxpayer's comments about uh, 60 Terrace Street, which he's saying is virtually the identical house, and it's so much lower. That's going to that's going to break down to a condition um, a condition difference. Um, I, I don't have the card in front of me. Uh, I don't know if the, the contractor got into it, but I believe they did. Um, so that's going to be a difference in uh, condition, okay. uh, which is reflected in, this, in the price per square foot. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from members of the board? When you, taxpayer says they're comparable. He's been in both of them and so forth. I guess I'd like to see the property card for six I can, I can, I can email that off. I, I, I thought he said that he had not been. I have not been in that. I have well, one. Still send it off. To but you. still, but yes, yeah. I have been or to. Go. I've been in other homes across the street to say that the rating that of very good versus the other homes that doesn't match up. There's our average ticket. I haven't been in sixty. Years. All right. Well, so I'd like to see so, 60? Yeah. 
All right. Any other questions? Or you go right to the committee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this one. And Rosie and Mark. All right. And we've got your email under address and phone number. Yeah, I think John uh, certainly has it. Okay. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for all your time. Did you hear from Michael Wood? I just don't believe Michael Wood. I'll have to follow up because something happened. There's, there's a confusion here. Oh, well, this is, this is the thing that we did, talked about the other day. We have someone else who is scheduled to be here, Michael Wood. And um, we looked at look this up in the statute. What happens if the, uh, if the taxpayer doesn't come on the night they're supposed to go to the city. Yeah, it's considered withdrawn. Yeah. I always assume if there was a screw up, it was probably one made by me, but I don't think there was in this case. So. <laughs> well, this is, a, I mean. <laughs> So that's this is another one where um, I I'm going to recommend a lower value. I'll explain it all, but she, she is not here because we spoke by email previously. So, oh, so we're it yeah, it's just it's just gonna, I'm going to explain to you what I what I the findings that I came up with. Uh, you can recommend or you know whatever, whatever you feel. Um, to Judson, the reappraisal contractor set two eighty four eight hundred. Um, she did not come to the informal, but did come to the formal grievance. No changes were made. The home is up on Judson, um, Judson, which is a very, uh, a mid very good neighborhood, which kind of is reflected in the land value. Uh, single story ranch built in 1987. Uh, this one is rated as being a very, uh, I'm sorry, uh, average to good condition, given a little, very little depreciation of 12%, 1,250 square feet. One full bath, one half bath, three bedrooms. Comparable sales are in similar neighborhoods. Um, one, two, and three are all mid very good um, neighborhoods. They're selling between two twenty-five and two hundred and eighty-four dollars a square foot. Um, one sixty-nine Town Street. That is a um, traffic good, so it, it's still a good neighborhood, but not a very good neighborhood. Um, and that one's at two eighty-five. Um, Town Hill Road. You mean? I'm sorry, what did I say? You said Town Street. Town Hill Road, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Town Street is where I live. So. I, get, I get punchy. I get punchy at the end of the night. I'm sorry. Subject property is currently assessed at three eighty four eight hundred or three hundred and eight dollars a square foot. So it is above um, what I feel are good sale uh, comps. Equity comps are right there on the same um, same street on Judson, um, same neighborhood, same quality built, probably same builder. I, I don't know. They're assessing between two hundred and forty three dollars and two hundred fifty two hundred sixty two dollars a square foot. Subject is at three hundred eight, which I feel is a little high. Uh, based on the equity comps and the sale comps, I feel like two hundred and fifty dollars per square foot would be more appropriate for the subject property um, for a total assessed value of three twelve five hundred. <clears throat> um, I believe the record card should be attached to this one as well. The reappraisal contractor did inspect the property, so I don't be, I don't believe there are any issues with the um, uh, physical characteristics of the property. Um, I feel like it is just over assessed. Any questions on any of this so far? And and is this an agreement that you've reached with the property owner to have it be reassessed at that number? Correct. Okay. So what's the number? It's um, three twelve five hundred or two hundred fifty dollars per square foot. And I can uh, tell you, uh, John and I met with the city attorney the other day to get guidance on. Uh, a few questions, and one of them was, how, how should we handle this? 
where there's an agreement between the uh, assessor and the uh, and the taxpayer. And he said the advice he gave us was that it makes sense f that for us to approve to hear and approve the agreement. So we have an agreement before us, and the question is, do we approve it? One question about the agreement, please. What? So you reduced it because of the square price per square foot of the other homes were closer to that? Yeah, so um, I, th I think the best comparison is the equity comps right there in the neighborhood. And they're in that $250 per square foot range. Um, and also, if you compare the sales on the first page, you know, they're the same thing. They're in that 225 to 285 or, you know, 250 is right in the, right kind of the sweet spot of the sales. Does that make sense? Because they're, you know, the, the first three are all in similar neighborhoods, same conditions. Um, so it's not fair to overassess this, this um, property at Judson Drive. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at your comparables and wondering if we end up with the same question that all these other places are overassessed. The, no, did the, did the the other ones that the sales are overassessed? No, no, on the equitable comparables, the assessed value of the, the neighboring houses. No, because they're all in the two forty to two to two sixty range, and the subject property is at three hundred eight. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, got it. Plus, they're not they're not here. But they, this is smaller size, and you say when it's smaller size, of course, square footage the square foot is usually higher. Yeah. Yeah, and number eight is probably the closest one in square foot. Okay. Uh, Tim, do you agree you going to say something? I move to approve the agreement. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Quick question about Blackwell. I just didn't hear. He's so, not here. So is it? The statute says it's deemed withdrawn. So. so just curious about that, because wasn't there somebody else who didn't show and you were working to try to get them in? Yeah, there were, I think, three, either two or three, and in each case they were withdrawn. They were like, okay, I, I just want to make sure we treat them all the same as opposed to saying we're assuming you're withdrawn rather than... John has followed up with the ones that didn't show up to say, like, hey, did you miss on, you know, accident or what happened? But they, they said, yeah, no, I yeah. changed So my question is, have we followed up with this guy tonight who no, didn't I mean, show? I've given a call, though. Just it's just, case, if you weird. followed up with the first bunch, well, even though statute, technically we could say no. The statute says no. But I'm, I mean, I'm but just it's saying fair. you treated yeah, people correct. differently, yeah, right. yeah. and that's a flaw. Yeah. I, I think that's a fair point. Yeah. I'm not looking for more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 8.36. And we're okay. recessed.